Uh, hello, we're back. Um, not a whole lot's happened around here again. Lately, what we've been working on, I've shown you a little bit, <clears throat> rearranging the shop, getting some things hooked up. Uh, started working on my three-phase converter uh, setup using an idler motor. Um, fortunately, I didn't record any of that so far, but I'm going to show you where we're at at this point, maybe record some. Um, mainly because I didn't know what I was going to do and it would just be a whole lot of footage of screwing up a bunch of stuff which I'm good at anyway um, so here we'll bring you up to date and I'll show you what we got going on as you can see we've actually got some uh, got some room cleared out in the old man cave um, got some shelves put up toolboxes lined up uh, still haven't made the shelf for the bench so that's something we're going to do uh, but uh, the issue that I was having um, is like I said I was doing the three phase converter uh, I've got this big like 10 horse electric motor uh, that we're going to run for an idler I've used this in the past in, in another shop I had and uh, it worked really well um, but I wanted instead of just sitting the thing on the floor and letting it walk around I was going to build a, a stand to bolt it to and, and attach it to the wall so I started doing some aluminum stuff um, learning new settings and all on my welder uh, I don't have a filter for my camera, so I don't want to try to try to uh, video what I've been welding. But um, you, know, you can see the the welder. I came from a transformer style welder, big Lincoln 300 amp machine, and uh, purchased this Prime Weld. Takes up a whole lot less floor space for sure. Um, but trying to go to an inverter setup there's a bit of a learning curve uh, you got frequencies and balance and all that stuff that you can play with now and I've never had to worry about that on the other machine I just set it on AC and let it roll uh, one thing that I don't have that I do want to do and and I haven't decided if I'm gonna buy one or if we're gonna build one uh, I do want to put a water cooler on it um, welding this aluminum it gets a tad bit warm I mean it's not so crazy you can't hold on to it but it does get a little bit warm uh, so that, that may be something we do in the future um, if you have one of these prime weld machines it's great um, I'm, I'm enjoying it so far but I will tell you you know we got a lot of dust and stuff here so I wanted to cover for it got looking around well as you seen from our other videos we sold our boat well our cover for our boat was destroyed so we didn't you know we didn't even try to sell it with it but I did find out that the motor cover for a 60 horse Evinrude fits perfect over this thing so there we go um, while I was welding on the aluminum uh, I ended up tripping the breaker I had it hooked up to the 110 source because um, I didn't have any 220 back here on this side we have 220 on my buddy's side but not over here so I decided well this is a good time to go ahead and and set up the 220 so I went ahead and started installing my three phase boxes and I'll explain to you what I got going on and I'll explain to you what I ended up running into alright so what I've done is I ran, ran a 30 amp 10 gauge line in to a 30 amp breaker here on this box this panel here is just a junction box to hook the machines up to as you can see right now I've got a 220 line coming out of it also um, goes into a static phase converter from the static phase converter, I think I overcomplicated it some. I ran out to an on-off switch. On-off switch, you turn it on, and that would turn on the rotary converter and the static converter and allow it to, to generate the third leg of power. I did that because I didn't want in 220, I, I, I didn't want the inverter, all that stuff running whenever I wanted to run 220. Well, like I said, I overcomplicated it. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to remove the switch completely. I'm going to take this panel out of play whenever it comes to just 220 stuff. The only thing this will be for is to run my three phase. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a junction box in right here. This little spot. And I'm going to hook 220 up there. Uh, and it, it is got a 30 amp breaker on the panel where it's coming out. So this is kind of redundant. I'm basically using that as a 30 amp switch. Uh, so I won't have to have any of this on unless I'm going to be running three phase equipment um, which I like better it eliminates the need for the switch because that was just really over complicating things um, 
I haven't run the static inverter in probably 15 years. Uh, so when I very first fired it up yesterday, I heard a pop. Um, I believe I busted a capacitor in it. Uh, you know, those things just go out over time. Uh, so we'll pull that thing out here in a little bit, and we'll tear it apart and look and see, and uh, and and you know, see if we got to order a new capacitor, or maybe it's not shorted across something. I, I don't know. But um, I'm gonna set you up. We're gonna go through and uh, try to wire in my 220 box, and. Um, Maybe we can get something going so I can at least finish building the stand for the idler motor and then I can hook this puppy up and go over to my old shop, pick up my lathe, bring it, get it set up, and let's get it wired in because once I get those two things in, we're going to start making some stuff. Crack this puppy open. Let's see what we got going on here. See if we actually did pop a capacitor in it or not. Um, kind of thinking that's what happened. Didn't like the way I had something. I don't know. But, uh, never really been inside of one of these, so uh, it's gonna be a first for me and you. Well, maybe not for you, but it is for me. Uh, my understanding is it's got a couple of capacitors and a relay. Um, this one from using it in the past, uh, this one did have an automatic shutoff. So once the once the motor started running, this would kick out. Uh, a lot of times when you build, if you just want to build one yourself, you can. Uh, you just there's some forms online, some uh, that give you the right capacitor size for the horsepower you're wanting to run. Most time you can just flip a switch, you know, flip the switch on it, hit your button to start your motor. And once your motor's up and running, you let go of the switch, and it'll just run off a 220, a, a three-phase motor will, but it doesn't have quite the same horsepower. Uh, starting and stopping a lot is uh, is hard on the capacitors, is hard on the box. Um, but you know, my lathe won't run off of this. The motor's too big. Uh, the, this is rated for minimum of three horse, maximum of five horse. I think it was. My idler motor's ten. Uh, but I have started an idler motor with it fairly constantly before, but it, it's not being started and stopped, and there's no load on it when I start it. So if I do have to replace capacitors, I may go ahead and upgrade them so that we can run a 10 horse with it with no issues. Um, but uh, let's see what we got in here first, and then we'll go from there. I'm thinking something might have happened. Huh, okay. Maybe not. Um, again, the relay, this relay right here is what actually will time out. Uh, once the motor starts running, it'll, it'll disengage it. Uh, you have your two capacitors. Usually if the capacitor blows, it's going to it's going to pop the end of it off and you see oil and everything. We're going to own these out, see if there's any issues with them. Uh, we don't want to touch the ends because we don't know if it actually has any power in them yet. Uh, could have fried this relay in it. I don't know. Um, I know that my light was coming on. That was working fine. So we're going to own out all the wires. We're going to check this little resistor uh, and see what we got going on. Uh, I know that if you look inside, 220 goes to these two. This is your your other uh, 110, 110, or 120, 120, and this is 120 out. Um, if you look inside, it comes out of the relay there. Uh, I don't see any issues with any of that. Um, we get 110, gets input through this little relay here, then goes over to this, which. <laughs> I guess it shuts off, but that's uh, don't look, <laughs> look like a lot of heavy-duty wiring you would think for uh, for 120 volt stuff. But let's get the meter and let's let's yeah, look at some crap. Sure, we don't have any power in these. Uh, or we start playing around too much. I don't have any AC power in that one. I don't have any AC power in that one. Um, I know they're not blown apart, so that shouldn't be an issue. Um, I know I'm getting continuity through these. I 
I think it may be a blue switch out that was in there. I, I don't I don't really see you know, anything going on here. Um, I mean, the only thing I could really do would be to hook it up. <sighs> yeah. Plug it in and see what happens. Uh, let me put it back together. Hook it, hook it back up in the, in the cabinet. And um, let's try it one more time. Maybe it was just, it didn't like the way I had it wired. Maybe the switch that I put it on that was hokey and cheap. Just couldn't handle it. Um, all right, panels all back together. So we got 220 going in. We know that because we got power on our welding lead. Um, flip the breaker. Let's see what happens. Uh, red light should come on on the static phase converter. That's the rectangle box on the left as you're looking at it. Um, the uh, like I said, the circuit breaker is just a big switch. Once we flip that, if we've got power like we're supposed to, I should be able to fire the milling machine up. I don't need the rotary converter to fire it up. Uh, it should fire off the static. So let's try it and see what happens. Alright. Uh, red light's not on. We're going to turn power on to the mill, which is back here. Got power on it now. Let's see what happens. Fire it up like you're supposed to. There's a little drag in it. That's what the converter, what the um, the phase converter is doing. Uh, it just it, it sends that little bit to it, kicks it up, and once it starts running, it's just running off the of, off of 220. Um, First time this puppy here is running three or four years. Man, it feels good. Um, I'm pretty stoked. Uh, we'll get the bracket finished up and uh, get things cleaned up around here and hopefully get the rotary converter in. And once that's mounted, man, I'm almost dead. <laughs> What was the loss? Uh, once that gets mounted, we'll have true three phase. I can bring the lathe in, get it wired up. I've been waiting a while for this. All right, that's a wrap for right this minute.